Missing person cases, especially those of adults, can often have tragic endings if the missing person is not located within a few days or weeks. Thankfully, some missing person cases are solved when the person is located alive and well. Each case is different, with some not wanting to go back to their old lives, and others desperate to see friends and family again. These missing person cases came to a happy ending in 2021. Number 5 When Phoebe Sickles apparently vanished without a trace in June of this year, the more her family dug into her disappearance, the worse the situation seemed to look. Then, more than nine weeks after she vanished, her family were relieved when this missing person case got a happy ending. Phoebe was 23 years old at the time of her disappearance, and had just moved back in with her father and stepmother. It was a difficult time for Phoebe. She and her husband had three young children together, but their relationship was rocky. It had been on and off for a while, but in June, they had decided to call it quits. Phoebe had gone with her children to stay with her parents. The plan was to live there long term, but after a few days, she said she needed to visit friends in Indianapolis. Her estranged husband picked up the children, and on June 14th, Phoebe was picked up by a female friend none of her family had heard of before. The trip was only supposed to be a few days, but that stretched out to multiple weeks and then months. Phoebe sent text messages to her father for a few days, and everything seemed normal. She also phoned her mother on June 16th to say that she was on her way over, but Phoebe never arrived. June 16th was the last time any of her friends remembered seeing her. The story about why or how she left changed multiple times, but she was last seen outside their apartment in Indianapolis. Phoebe's parents became concerned after they hadn't heard from her for a few days. When her husband said she hadn't tried to call her children, her family knew something was wrong. Phoebe had never gone more than a day without speaking to them before. A missing person report was filed, and police contacted the friends Phoebe had been with. The friends first tried to claim a family member who had been out of town at the time picked her up from the restaurant, then that one of the friend's boyfriends drove her to her mother's old house. In the end, they told police that Phoebe had run away of her own accord. Phoebe's family didn't buy this story and tried to hire a private investigator to work the case, but the trail went cold. Finally, in August, Phoebe's family got the clue they needed. Police responded to an overdose in Indianapolis when Phoebe approached. She said she was homeless and there didn't seem to be anyone else there with her. It was the first concrete piece of evidence her family got. Things got better the following day when they discovered Phoebe had been arrested for possession of illegal substances. They now knew where she was and knew that she was safe. What prompted Phoebe's disappearance is unknown and will likely stay private within the family, but her family knew that they were lucky to get a happy ending when this missing persons case was solved. Number 4 the only thing more mysterious than Vasile Gargos' sudden disappearance 30 years ago was his reappearance earlier this year. Vasile was a cattle merchant living in Romania in the early 1990s. He had a wife and children and seemed to be leading an ordinary enough life. His work would often require him to take short business trips to other areas to sell and buy cattle, but they never lasted longer than a few days. Then came a trip in 1991. There was nothing to indicate anything out of the ordinary when he left his home and his family expected he would return a few days later. When that didn't happen, they naturally became concerned and contacted authorities. Information about the initial search is scarce, but it seems nothing came up. After many years of searching, Vasile's family came to the conclusion that he had either been in an accident or met with foul play and was no longer alive. Fifteen years after he vanished, his family began holding memorial services for him, convinced that he had passed away. 
His children grew up and started families of their own. One son and his daughter-in-law remained at the family home. It was here that Vasile would reappear in August of 2021, almost exactly 30 years after he had vanished. It was late on a Sunday night when a mysterious car pulled up to the family home. Neighbors spotted the vehicle, but they were unable to see the license plate or give any description of the driver. Any thought of that was knocked from their minds when Vasile climbed out of the car. Despite having aged 30 years, the neighbors were certain this was the missing man. He was the only person who got out of the car and the driver left before anyone could investigate. Vasile seemed to be in relatively good health, but was confused and apparently couldn't remember how to open the gate. His daughter-in-law came out to greet the newcomer and was shocked when she discovered who it was. His son couldn't believe it. Now the mystery of where Vasile had been all this time began. Reports say that he was wearing the same clothes he had been in when he vanished. He was clean and appeared to have been well cared for, but seemed to have neurological problems. He didn't remember his children and seemed confused. He had a ticket with him for a nearby train. Lots of reports on this case claim the ticket was from the day he vanished, but it actually appears to be from the day that he returned home. This makes the story somewhat less mysterious, but the ticket still doesn't seem to be explained, as he arrived by car rather than train. He also had with him his identity card with an address. There's been plenty of speculation as to what happened to Vasile. When asked where he was, he claims that he was home. Some believe he had abandoned his family and started a new life elsewhere. But when he got too old for them to care for, the new family left him for his old family to care for. Alternatively, he may have started a new life somewhere else, but was suffering from dementia that made him forget the past 30 years and believe he had never left. Others have suggested he may have been in prison or was even held as a spy after the collapse of the USSR. It's likely someone out there knows where Vasile has been, even if he no longer remembers. So while this missing person cold case has been somewhat solved, there's still a lot more of this mystery to uncover. Number 3 Usually, when a missing person is found, family can be assured that they are safe, even if they don't want to return home. Sadly, that doesn't seem to be the case for the family of Alyssa Olivier. Alyssa was 39 years old when she went missing in August of this year. She was a creative woman with a website dedicated to her art. At the time, she was separated from her husband, with whom she had an 11-year-old daughter and was in the process of selling the house they once called home together. She was living with her parents in Colorado and struggling with the sudden dramatic changes to her life. In late July, she traveled from Colorado to Kansas to visit a great aunt, then decided to visit friends in New York City. She graduated from a private college in the city and had lots of friends who still lived there. She drove to New York, arriving on the 2nd. For a few days, she kept in touch with her family, but on August 4th, that stopped. Alyssa's family tried to get in touch with the friends she had supposedly been visiting, only to discover Alyssa had never gotten in touch with them. It was then that she was officially reported missing. Alyssa had gone off grid before on religious retreats, but this felt different. She'd never been gone so long without talking to her daughter. Her car was found in early September with a dead battery and an empty fuel tank. It had been parked in a two-hour parking zone and was left there for a month. Inside were most of Alyssa's belongings, with the exception of her wallet. The wallet was later found by an unknown individual on the street. They tried to contact Alyssa to return it to her, but they were unsuccessful. As missing person reports were posted on social media, people got in touch to say that they had seen her on the streets in New York. The police also wanted to speak to Alyssa after she was seen kicking a passerby walking down the street. But every time her friends and a private investigator they had hired to find her went to the spot where she had been seen, Alyssa was already gone. Finally, in October, 
the private investigator managed to catch up to her. Alyssa was clearly unwell, but it was impossible to say if it was her mental or physical health. She refused to go with the investigator, giving no reason, but accepted the $100 that he gave her. It could be seen as a somewhat anticlimactic ending to this missing person case. While Alyssa has been located, she isn't necessarily safe and still needs help. While not a happy ending, it's a reminder that we don't always know people's stories. Number 2 The family of Alexei Kotov had not seen or heard from him for more than 20 years when they got the news that he had been found in Kazakhstan earlier this year. Alexei was a Russian national in his early 20s when he lost contact with his family in 1999. He had joined the army some years earlier and briefly served in Kazakhstan. He returned home in 1997 for his brother-in-law's funeral, then returned to work in Kazakhstan on a contract basis. He kept in contact with his family, but that suddenly stopped one day in 1999. After they hadn't heard from him for a while, Alexei's family contacted the military to see if they had any more information. All they were told was that Alexei's unit had been disbanded and the other soldiers had returned home to their families. They had no information about why Alexei hadn't done the same. Alexei wasn't officially reported missing, but his family did try to launch a search effort for their missing loved one. They contacted the show Wait For Me multiple times. The show is a talk show, which provides a service to try to help find missing loved ones. They also consulted fortune tellers, psychics, and other similar people to try to find any information about Alexei. They were relieved when they were told he was still alive, but they were no closer to finding where he actually was. The case went cold until an unusual video started being shared on social media. In it, a man claiming to be Alexei calls out for help from his family. He explains that he's been doing forced labor for a farmer in Kazakhstan for the past 20 years and asks for their help in getting him free. He provided details about where he grew up and about his family, enough to convince people that he was who he said he was. Kazakhstan law enforcement were alerted to the video and were able to locate the man in question. He was found at a winter camp where he had been forced to work for a 44-year-old farmer. How exactly Alexei ended up there is unclear. He had ended up in the hospital after being attacked at a train station in 1999, and at some point after that, he was allegedly kidnapped and forced to work. Those that found Alexei said that it was clear he had not seen any creature comforts in several years. Alexei was able to talk to his family via phone, assuring them that he was okay, before being flown back to Russia and reuniting with them. Number 1 For more than three years, the family of Megan Pekaki searched tirelessly for the missing person. Finally, in March of this year, the cold missing person case was finally able to be brought to a close and solved. Megan was 23 years old at the time of her disappearance. She was last seen hanging out with friends in Marion, Virginia on May 19, 2017. She told them that she had texted another friend for a lift, and a short while later, a pickup truck pulled up outside. It was late and dark, so her friends didn't get a good look at the vehicle or the driver, but Megan got in. It was the last time any of them saw or heard from her. Megan had run away a few times as a child, but never for more than a week, and now as an adult, this behavior was extremely strange. It took a few days for her family to realize something was wrong, but a week after she was last seen, her family reported her missing. Law enforcement began a search for Megan, but the investigation hit a roadblock early on. A few days after she was reported missing, Megan sent text messages to her mother. She claimed she wanted to disappear, that she was okay, and not to look for her. Local police issued a statement that contact had been made and she was no longer missing, but her family didn't buy the messages. 
There were small details about the messages that didn't sit well for Megan's mother. She used words Megan typically wouldn't and called her mama spelled M-A-M-A -M -A, instead of mama spelled M-O-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Nobody had actually spoken to Megan and shortly after the messages were sent, the phone number was disconnected. All Megan's social media accounts were also deactivated. It was as if she had vanished off the face of the planet. Megan's mother continued to search for her daughter, and law enforcement got involved again. A search of the area where Megan was last seen turned up no results, and appeals for the driver of the truck to come forward were never answered. In the first year after the disappearance, a few leads came in, but they all led to dead ends. Then in March of this year, Megan's family got the call they had been waiting for. Megan had been located. An unnamed local law enforcement agency had non-criminal contact with Megan. They ran her name and date of birth and discovered that she was considered a missing person in Marion. The department contacted Marion police who went to interview Megan in this unknown location. Now 27 years old, Megan confirmed that she had left of her own accord and shouldn't be considered missing. While not the perfect family reunion that her family would have hoped for, her family are happy to know that she wasn't in any danger and that this cold case could finally be closed. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.